Am I live? Is everything updated? Cool. All right. Welcome back. Uh, about an hour from now, there's going to be a nice exhibition match between uh, Penguin GIM versus uh, Leela Zero. Um, doubtless everybody here has heard by now of uh, Alpha Zero being Google's uh, chess engine and Go playing engine and Shogi playing engine. Uh, and in order to prepare for this match, I'm just going to do some uh, nice fun games against our new friend here. Uh, relevant problem. Oh, sorry, I've been like under a rock for the last week. Uh, just working on a variety of things. Some work related, some um, related to this new bot API that Lee Chess just deployed. The idea is that you can set up a special account that just plays um, bot games, that just plays using an engine. Um, so, yeah, why don't I go ahead and play some games here against uh, what is said to be a 1900 rated bot. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Oops, um, maybe it doesn't like rated challenges. All right. Or, yeah, sorry, I'm doing these things live because uh, it's more exciting that way. Um, but perhaps this bot, let's see, plays standard King of the Hill, three check anti chess, atomic horde, racing kings, and crazy house. Uh, okay, cool. Um, I mean, all else failing, I could play my own bot, but where's the fun in that? But, um, yeah, let's try one more challenge here. Let's just play some standard chess to see if it accepts this. Okay, cool, we can do that. Oh, sorry for... Well, I missed the sound, but maybe there are sounds. Maybe I just can't hear them. Maybe that's the issue. Alright, let's uh, try that. Okay, I can hear it now. Cool. Um, yeah, so Leech has just deployed this new bot API to enable... Um, anybody to run a dedicated uh, engine account um, and this will allow AIs such as Alpha Zero or I'm sorry such as Leela Zero the open source and therefore more awesome more exciting more fun for all of us um, us being the chess players who are not researchers who don't care about theoretical stuff we just want to see practical results uh, it's more fun for us to see um, what happens when you actually do set up a neural network and anybody can play against it and try whatever they want to try against it. Um, yeah, it's good to be back. It's been a busy couple weeks and stuff, but we um, made some excellent progress supporting variants with the new um, bot API that Lee Chess is offering. Um, I probably should have like picked a slower time control so I could commentate more. Um, but yeah, I've been helping out with testing and uh, the new bot API. Um, what else have I been up to? Oh, merging official stockfish changes as I ordinarily do. Um, so obviously we know we're up to stockfish nine, right? But also, um, Lee Chess uh, tends to run a slightly newer version than 9. We're running like the latest, greatest stable build that we can have. Uh, occasionally, people do point out things when we missed a detail. Um, something I think was pointed out this morning, and we fixed it even before it was pointed out, which is pretty amazing, but um, just speaks to the dedication of our. Um, uh, entire Leeches staff. Um, debating where I put my stuff here. Do I play 94? I think I do. I've been holding off on playing at the whole game, but I think I have to do it. 
Um, but yeah, uh, so I've been helping trying to keep, oh, whoops, uh, trying to keep Stockfish using the latest and greatest code, but also supporting all the variants. It's not losing support for any of those while we continue upgrading the engine. Oh, now you take. Oh, because I hung a pawn. Except you're not taking the... Okay, whatever. Oh, Stockfish, I'll never understand you. <laughs> you and your infinite complexity. That's pretty funny, though. That, like... If it plays... Obviously, this is playing at a bit of a handicap. It's playing at a 1900 level, or attempting to. So it'll throw in a random mistake once in a while here. Um... But the mistake was, like, it didn't play the follow-through, uh, just taking the free pawn after I'd given it up like an idiot. Um, yep, yep, yep. So, can I defeat the spot? It's not looking good. Here I am, trying to, like, save the pride of humanity. Um, or at least prepare us so that... Um, Andrew Tang, who's going to be playing in about an hour here, will be able to um, to try to defeat Leela Zero. So I'm just doing this as just a little warm-up announcement to let people know that that match is going to be ongoing very soon here. Um, okay, well, this is going to get me in big trouble, but we're going to tuck the king in on h5 and throw everything forward. Um, and hopefully this will work. Because, um, you know, I don't have a plan B here. Maybe this will spook the engine. Maybe I throw an H5 first. Uh, no, then he plays G... No, H... If I play H5, it plays H4. And I have to take... So we're just going to push F4. Hey, Owen. What's up? Um, so I do... I think I take here, and this lets me get my rooks and our queen into the game. Oh, again I'm hanging the e-pawn. Oh my goodness. Well, this could be interesting. I could see how the engine missed these moves, because they're not very good. <laughs> Um, ha! I attack your queen. Didn't see that coming yet, okay. Um, yeah, this is not going well. Alright, we're going to sack the pawn so we can get the bishop out. Oh, actually I'm attacking this too. That's convenient. Um, mm-hmm. Well, this looks insane, but I don't see how it gets me mated, so we're playing it. Oh. It's not mate, but... Um, maybe I should have thought more about this before playing it. Oh, right, that's... there it is. Okay. And then there's this check. Oh. Well, we run, but we get mated anyway. But I got really close to not getting mated. Alright. Um, we're going to try again and pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> no, I got uh, into positions where I was not familiar with what was going on. Which, I mean, that's a recurring theme here, right? Maybe someday there will be a bot good enough that can teach me how to play openings so I'm not like terrible at them. Um, or if I at least get a decent opening position, maybe I'll be prepared to play the middle game that follows it. Uh, yeah, let's clamp this. I uh, just need to wait for a blunder somehow. Alright, just develop all the pieces. D6 is eventually coming. Alright, now are we playing D6? I thought so. Alright. Um, here, let's take that. I'm not sure why. 
just felt like the right thing to do here. So I can play f4 and bring the knight back. Or f3 and put the knight on e3. That was my plan the whole time. Um, what's this? What is this? Why would you put the queen there? Okay, I'm just gonna... Well, I can't keep the tension. There's no way for me to keep it. No, I could let it double my pawns. That's okay. This is a path forward. I mean, yeah, there is the hole on d4, but... This knight is too good. And this half-open d-file. It's like I've actually planned something for once. Um, I don't know what, why the engine just allowed me... Like, 1900s wouldn't miss this. I hope that uh, newer AIs will be able to emulate human blunders. Um, I honestly doubt that they will. But once you have a way to model um, common human errors, then you can start um, doing the next evolution of that, which would be something that could train a person to not make as many errors. Um, which, I hear there's good money involved with that sort of thing. There's like world championship human chess championships, right? Where humans get to compete and decide who's the best human. And they call them a world champion or something like that. I don't know why like more money hasn't been put into that sort of adversarial research to help a person like just be the best person they can be. I wonder when that's going to take off. Eventually it will. I just wonder when. You would think that um yeah, they'd be better than conventional engines at emulating blunders. I agree. I don't know how much better, but you'd think that they'd be better. Just that intuition's definitely there. Yeah, if anything had a chance of emulating human blunders, it would be uh, something trained um, on a neural network or any other kind of machine learning. Um, okay, so, what a strange position. Um, let's unhang some of these things. I'm going to give up a pawn or two or five to try to get a position that, like, makes some sense. Um... I really want that D pawn. I have no way to get that without getting myself in trouble here. Um, well, I don't want to lift this rook, but I kind of have to. But now everything gets complicated, because rook D8 is coming. Oh, I did not see that. Okay, fine. Whatever. I'm not playing that position. Knights are too tricky. Um, have they fixed the bug where it was losing every game? Uh, you might need to be more specific, because I'm pretty sure... Um, that doesn't sound like a real bug, but, okay, maybe it was, but that's kind of crazy. I mean, you'd think that playing a losing variation in every game would be something that, like, a neural network would uh, prevent from happening, period. Um... Like, if that's happening, that's a design flaw, and I don't know. 
or a pretty severe implementation flaw. It doesn't sound like something that could happen. Um, I heard they did have some issue with promotions, uh, black pawns promoting. Um, I heard that that's been fixed, but I'm not sure what you're referring to. All right, can I promote a pawn, please? Pretty please? Just let me win. Next time I should just do like five plus five. Why am I doing this like blitz against engines? This doesn't make sense. Let me guess, rook g1? Uh huh, okay. Just need to keep the wind just over the horizon so the engine keeps missing it. Take the slowest possible win, because that's the one that an engine that tries to play play at the level of a 1900 is going to try to let you do. Um, it's like I'm playing all these slow... Like, I don't have any way to immediately promote, but it's inevitable that one of these two will promote. Um, but yeah, I'm playing in such a way that delays the win as long as possible um, to maximize the chance that the engine makes another blunder. Uh, so that is rook b4. So if the king moves up, it's too easy for me to win. Otherwise, I use my knight to hold on to these two pawns while the king mops up these on the king's side. Why is this for a mature audience? Because um, online content is difficult to moderate. I don't have any explicit intention to do mature whatever, but also if people get like ridiculous, I'm not going to try to moderate that too heavily uh, while I'm playing. Um, okay, fine, I'll take your pawn. Uh, I keep changing my mind here. I'm facing some analysis paralysis problems. Nope. <laughs> don't push that. Oh my god, don't push that. Wow. Um... That would have been bad to push. King c6? No. Um, what a mess. What a mess. How am I going to win this? That'll do. The engine was feeling sorry for me. But no, if you play against a lot... Look, I don't know. You might think I'm crazy for like del playing the slowest possible mate. Um, or the slowest possible way to try to win that. But... Like, an engine that attempts to play like a 1900 is just going to play a blunder every X moves just randomly. Now, that's not exactly how it works, but there's just, like, most engines will throw in some random variable every time it moves. And eventually, if you keep rolling the dice, it will make a blunder um, um, in such a way that a human would think that this is not a human blunder. But to an engine, that doesn't look like the engine sees in this position, oh yeah, white's totally winning. Let me just give away my rook, because like, that's something a 1900 would do. Because it evaluates that all the other variations are lost, so this one's just, just as bad. Um, or just ever so slightly worse than other stuff it can play. Uh, but to a human, this looks quite different, doesn't it? 
Um, so, yeah. You're not going to see any of that sort of stuff with uh, Leela. Leela will not play this kind of stuff. Even if you were to like, play it and it had some sort of handicap involved, um, it would not make blunders uh, that the scent in this sense of a blunder. Um, I'm not being very articulate here, but um, I still think that was, I don't know, relevant somehow. Um, yeah, what the heck. Let's play... What's my rating? 2120? Really? That's my rating? How did I get that rating? Okay, let's play casual then. I don't feel like giving away 2,000 rating points here. Uh, I'm kind of surprised that's my rating. When did that happen? Uh, did I implement this bot? This bot is not mine. This is... Um, I forget who hosts this particular bot. I did contribute toward um, the utility that many... Um, there's a third-party library called LeechessBot, which um, interacts with um, the LeechS uh, API for bots providing moves to LeechS um, that have a special license to do so. Um, uh, anybody can create an account and so forth with this. You just have to register it in such a way that says it's a bot. Um, but somebody produced a third-party library to uh, interact with Python chess and with engines so that they can more conveniently consume the Lee Chess API. I slightly expanded that to be able to play any chess variant and this bot here relevant problem um, is consuming that particular bot or that particular third-party library which I enhanced so it's capable of playing variants however it seems to be configured to decline all variant challenges so I'm not sure what's going on there um, but no, it's still cool. This relevant problem does still play like a 1900, which is pretty great. Uh, you seem like a CS guy who doesn't really like to talk. Uh, what kind of computer science stuff would you like to talk about? I think most people aren't interested in it, but I'd be glad to talk about it. Um, let's see. Uh... Yeah, I guess I said, like, people wouldn't consider me a software engineer. Um, despite the fact that I do a lot of software development, uh, engineering comes with this connotation that um, you have a very strong mastery of the field. Uh, very strong expertise of how to handle all sorts of difficult problems in computer science. And my comment there is it might be a bit boastful for me to claim that sort of thing, even though I do a lot of software development. Um, on a daily basis, I'm not fully utilizing uh, everything I learned for about computer science. Um, but we still have a lot of fun doing some of the software development and... Um, contributing to tools that everybody can use, which is pretty cool. Um, so where do I go here? I want to get this pawn. It's just tricky. Uh, why don't I go after the rook? It's a much easier target. Actually, I want to take the d4 square. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, I mean, yeah, you could use the word programmer. Like, would you call somebody who knows how to type on a keyboard a typist? I don't know. Programmer does not have a very positive connotation. <laughs> it basically means you know how to type, uh, know how to follow instructions. But... 
Um, certainly, you can do a lot of things uh, as a programmer that are more creative than just writing code. Um, let's see. It forces calculus a lot, and you don't see how it correlates with this computer science. Um, now, calculus is important. Well, these days, statistics is pretty important. Uh, statistics, um, yeah, you can understand it in a practical sense, but if you want to do the actual engineering and write your own, I don't know even why you would invent new mathematical methods, um, but the stronger grounding you have in math and in calculus and multivariable calculus and linear or matrices and like the more you understand about all these things, uh, the better equipped you are to deal with difficult problems. But yeah, com a lot of computer science, I guess, could be studied without understanding the math behind it. Just because the problems are that difficult that even a fuzzy understanding of math can get you pretty far. Um, but you can get even farther, I guess, if you know all the math. Um, you could understand the consequences of various ways of um, estimating or calculating given quantities. Because, um, like, let's say you're doing some stock market real-time trading or something. Um, you can either come up with the exact number for whatever problem you're trying to define, or you can come up with, these are five different ways I can produce an estimate and these are the bounds in which I think um, my estimate will fail or be too high or be too low this often or um, you have different ways of measuring the quality of your estimates. Um, now I guess that's only one possible application but um, you're doing a master's thesis on automated planning. Nice. Um, yeah, well, I don't know, I, with regard to the chess bot thing, like, yeah, everybody, I don't know, a lot of people find it interesting for a while to produce a chess bot, and then you realize, well, you have to, like, write all the rules of chess. And at some point, it does become tedious. Um, unless you're doing, like, super advanced stuff with it. Um... Yeah, writing your own can be quite a chore. Um, but I guess it can also be rewarding in its own way. Wait, I could just take this pawn, like, two different ways. Why have I not taken it yet? Hello. Yeah, I think automated planning's pretty exciting. Like, there's a whole variety of things you can do with AI. Um, and planning is going to be important in the future, because there will be things that need to be planned. <laughs> uh, that's for sure. Um, yeah, so... I don't know, everybody... I don't know. Chess does have this one hubris or appeal to it, but yeah, doing the actual um, master's level research there is probably more interesting. Now is it possible? You know, that is a really good question. Um, you could probably... So the bot API allows moves to be relayed um, using standard algebraic notation, I believe. So if there's a way to play moves on a DGT board and create an HTTP post request, containing a move in standard algebraic notation, then you could probably have a bot um, that relays moves from a DGT board. Um, uh, one minor little nuance is it would be marked as a bot account and people would have whatever feelings they have about that, but um, yeah, it sounds like they're, you'd probably be capable of being able to um, play on a DGT board and get the moves relayed. 
if you had a way to extract the moves from the board and export them as uh, HTTP POST requests. Uh, let's see. Electrical Engineering College has a CS module. Let's see. Oh, okay, I see. So they're trying to teach... Um, it's an electrical engineering college, but they do offer some CS or CS program or module, as you say. Um, it's like everybody there has, um, I don't know, is I guess a little bit more acquainted with uh, electrical engineering. Um, I'm trying to think of what to say. Well, I guess a lot of real-world problems do require math. Um, so even going into computer science, like unless you've got maybe a PhD in computer science or something, you're going to have to know some math. If you really are at the pinnacle of the field, um, then maybe you don't need to be solving real-world problems or something, but could focus more on, um, or I'm sorry, fo wouldn't need to solve like practical problems, but could focus more on theoretical or academic sorts of problems. Um, but otherwise you probably will use math at some point. All right, there's a stalemate like everywhere here. Rook D1, yep. I called it, but I played this because it seals off the king. So now what? That rook is confined to the D file now. So now if I just could like put my knight and no, if I move my knight, the king gets the C5 square. So let's tuck my king out on C6 there. Oh. You meanie. You horrible monster, you computer. <laughs> you don't even let me show my brilliancy. I was going to like tuck my king in on c6 here and then maneuver my knight around somewhere. I don't know where, but okay, mate in one it is. That's cool. <laughs> but yeah, like it should have just kept shuffling back and forth between these two squares. I can't take the rook because of the stalemate. Actually, it's not stalemate, because knight takes, gives up the c5 square, but, like, just net the king, and, um, I mean, yeah, I could promote a pawn, but that's boring. I was going to try to find a way to shuffle the knight, um, until a mate just pops up. Oh, but if shuffling the knight would result in rook d3, or, I don't know, it's complicated. Here, uh, my rematch button is gone. Our bot has gotten impatient with us and started playing another opponent. Um, here, but I've got a 2,000 blitz rating. Yeah, we, we can afford to lose some blitz rating points. I take your king. Oh, all right. I'm going to play a French. All right. So this is a way for me to learn openings, like, um, most of the time people transpose into, uh, what's it called? I forget the name of it, but it's a queen pawn opening. We exchange the E pawns, they play D5, I play E takes, E takes, and I play D4. But here we seem to have transposed into a Sicilian. Oh, right, right, yeah. Um, well, the good news there is that there's, like, entire categories of, uh, problems where bots compete against each other these days. You don't have to go fa too far to find a way to, um, try playing competitively. 
Uh, but yeah, chess is a simple enough problem that you can see the progress your bot's making against other bots. Um, there are a lot more challenging problems out there, I guess, where like they have StarCraft AI competitions, they've got uh, what other kind of AI competitions are there out there? I know there's the AI, open AI gym, which I try not to promote too much. Um, but yeah, there's in general just more and more adversarial AI contests. Um, but chess is by far uh, the most popular of those, at least at the moment, because there's just such a backlog of engines to play against. Um, the Lee chess policy against that, or about that, is um, the bot has to follow the terms of service. Namely, it can't be boosting or sandbagging. Um, so a bot that tries to lose on purpose can't be playing rated games that way. Um, obviously that's at moderator's discretion. They just don't want the rating system to get messed up. Yeah, chess is kind of tedious to write a bot for, though, honestly. But you're right that it's simple enough. You just have to... I mean, the rules are pretty clear and straightforward, and there's tons and tons of examples. Um, there's also the chess programming wiki, um, which has quite a bit of content, at least until it goes down, uh, which is scheduled to happen later this year. Um, yeah, I think th one person has already made a bot, they call it like Badfish Chess or something, and it just tries to play the worst possible move every move. Um, and some players have taken a tact of trying to uh, force it to win, which, that's a challenge in itself, right? Why will the chess programming wiki go down? Because it's hosted in wiki spaces, and wiki spaces is um, closing their... Uh, I don't know all the details, but it's not going to be there. Um, just because of hosting costs. So somebody's got to like do something to try to save it. Um, so as it stands right now, I don't know of anybody who's tried to like uh, step up and say they'll pay to host it. And to be honest, like yeah, there's a lot of hosting costs involved because there's just so much content there, and it's got this high uptime availability. Um, I can't exactly fault them for taking it down. But it's, it's a treasure trove of uh, chess programming content uh, while it still lasts. Whoa, okay, I guess the 1900 might play that, because, like, that's a check, right? But that's a bishop. So, again, another reminder, about a half hour from now, um, the Leela Zero versus uh, Andrew Tang Grandmaster uh, match will be taking place. Um, so yeah, get your popcorn. It's going to be good fun. I'm not getting checkmated here. Also, when the time comes, somebody please remind me to like host the channel. I don't remember, is that going to be like hosted on the Lee Chess channel? Does anybody know? I should know this because like I'm a Lee Chess dev, but um, it's been a busy weekend. I'm sure it'll be more than obvious where it's happening when it happens, but um, I assume it's the Lee Chess channel, but it might be Andrew's channel, so I don't know. It'll be a fun event regardless how it happens. 
Um, I'm going to protect my pawn. Oh, so check that out. I guess a 1900 might fall for this, right? Okay, it's on Andrew's channel. I believe that. That makes sense. After all, he's the one playing, so... Another check. Alright, I'll take that. How many more checks is it going to give? We're not playing three check chess, right? Because if so, I'm kind of lost. Alright. Um... I don't need your... No, I'll take the queen, fine. And then I could take the pawn after taking the queen. Yeah, I just think, though, 1900 could fall for some of these things if they looked at all the other lines and are like, well, I don't like any of those other moves, so I'm just going to let whatever happens here happen. It's, I guess, not likely, but it could happen. Um, everything's hanging. Here. I do this because if it takes my knight, I take the bishop. It takes my bishop, I take the pawn, or I push my rook to d8 or something. But my point is that like I want to play rook d8. And neither rook can take either one of these pawns. Or if they do, I get to play rook d8. Which might be check or might just be pinning a rook. Um, yeah, so that is an awesome tactic. Alright, so now it tre threatens to promote, right? Um, <sighs> I'm sorry, if rook c7, I just take the rook instead. Alright, uh, what's the best way to do this? check. Best here is obviously going to be subjective, but I like this way of doing it. Because this is just ridiculous. And of course it denies me the most fun continuation where it promotes and I'm probably mating somehow, I think. Maybe. Um, how do I win this? I have too many pieces here. Oh, trap the king. We have trapped this king. And then we play that. There we go. We found it. That was tricky. Um, yeah, okay, we'll play a rematch. Sure, why not? But yeah, I think I've finally caught up on most of my coding projects uh, that I maintain. Again, I do intend to double back and work on the Relay Chess uh, project next. Now that I think I got all my Stockfish-related stuff in order. Um, let's defend this. So yeah, another thing Lee Chess recently offered was the ability to um, have third-party software or sites that authenticates using Lee Chess. So if you are running your own chess site, um, you could use Lee Chess-based authentication instead of requiring people to s register with your site with their email and all that stuff. Um, you could have people register with the Lee Chess account on any site. Oh. oh! I'm sorry that I was not aware um, of what was broken there. Wow. Yeah, sorry that the API update's gonna cause such a headache there. Alright, I'm gonna expose my king and hope for the best. The king's perfectly fi fine and safe here. Um, 
other than the fact that it's getting mauled. But it's it's a very gentle mauling. What kind of engineers made Alpha Zero? I would say well, I mean we know who did it, right? It was Dennis Hasabis, if I'm pronouncing his name right. Um and various other masters level uh or people who have their masters in computer science uh who formed a special research group um dedicated to ai and i'm sure they didn't do it just because they like chess or just because they like go um i'm sure they had other uh a broader vision in mind. Oh, what? Wait, am I not trapping a queen here? No, uh, I don't have any way to collect it, even if it were trapped. Still, that's the most useless queen I've ever observed. Um, until I look at some of my own tournament games. But we'll forget about those for now. Uh, the fetch games API changes. Oh, right, that one. Um, wow. Yeah, sorry you can't get the evals bundled with that. Um, and of course, some level of searching is required to obtain an evaluation. It's not just like a static evaluation. It's looking one move or n moves deep, you need something that better predicts what's going on in that position. Oh, that's kind of why I like, I, I don't know, I liked a lot of the Chessotron exercises that didn't require calculation. Those are really novel and innovative and amazing. Um, and really force even the most experienced players to take a step back and try to figure things out from scratch. Um, I really enjoyed those. Uh, but yeah, calculation exercises are very popular too. Um, can I just sack the knight and win the game? I want to sack the knight and win the game. I have to defend it, but then the queen moves and like... Um, all right, we're going to defend the knight. My king's safe enough this way. Um, yeah, let me see if I could find it. Chess Otron? Where was this hosted again? I know at one point it was on GitHub IO. Um, I should have an alias for this. Um, let's see. Can I... Oh, man. What a complicated position. Here, my bishop's actually better back here. I was trying to get my queen to g6, and the engine doesn't like this. Um, let's see. Yeah. Uh, hopefully people will rem remember this command. <laughs> I just created it with both bots. Oops. I've still not fully transitioned from uh, Nightbot over to uh, what's it. Um, yeah. Uh, I forgot I had that up and running. That's pretty funny. All right, so how do I win this? Incidentally, that's not linked with the bot that I deployed on Lee Chess. Even though it has the same name, they're not connected at present. Um, yeah, what was that powered by? Phantom Bot. Phantom Bot is the source code that runs underneath the chat bot, go to Lesher Bot. Um, okay, so. Yeah, I think PhantomBot's awesome and amazing and open source and Java-based. 
The last of which I don't strongly care about, but um, um, the fact that it's open source and so popular is pretty great. Uh, it's feature rich and easily configurable. Writing your own extensions to it seems very confusing at present. Um, at some point I will want to try to do some extensions, something or other with it. Um, just because think of all the fun things we could do, if, like Lee Chess and uh, Chat Window could interact more directly. But I have to give more thought to like what would be most beneficial for the least amount of effort. Um, Uh, yeah, well, I don't know. But yeah, I think all the... <laughs> oh, my knight can't escape. This confused me so badly for a second there. I can try to escape with the knight. Now, chances are this knight can't be taken because, like, queen takes d4 just mates or something. That's what I'm banking on. If you're playing an actual tournament game, calculate. Don't just randomly move around the pieces and say this probably works, but... If you're playing online for an audience, you kind of have to, like, just play some random moves and see what happens. Um, so I'll play a couple faster games after this, and we'll head on over to Penguin GIM's channel. Which I think is twitch.tv slash penguin gim1 or something. I think that's right. We'll find out. Oh no. Now that's my pawn. This is our key to victory. I mean, yeah, I was snatching all the other pawns just because they were free, but... This one in particular is pretty important. Um, okay, fine. Take my knight. Let's see if I care. Take my rook. You're not taking my things. I will make you take it, and you will be happy. Alright. I tried to find a fancy mate at the end there, couldn't find one. But this works. Oh, Penguin GM1. Okay. And his Lee Chess account is Penguin GIM or something. Um, I know this bot API is really new and awesome and stuff. The rematch button disappears when they, when your opponent, regardless who that opponent is, enters into a new game. Some bots can play more than one game at a time, so like a rematch button would make sense here. Um, but that's a very minor nitpick um, on something that's otherwise working quite excellently. All right. Huh. The more I think about it, now I have to rethink that position, because, like, should it be possible to do a rematch and play a rated game while another rated game is in progress? Like, what does this do with ratings? the way they're currently implemented. Um, I guess my initial inclination is to say bots should only play one rated game at a time, but that's no fun. And there's several other challenges with ratings anyway, so like, I'm nitpicking over nothing here. Um, how many bots can... how many games can bots play? I think Leechus has a hard limit of 200-something. Um, I could be mistaken, but, you know, you'd have difficulty playing that many games at once, regardless of uh, what you're made of. Oh, goodness. Do I have to protect that pawn? Do I really have to protect that? I'm protecting it. Okay. You got me. Well played. I was going to drop my bishop back here to kick the knight, and saw what I was going to do. Alright, we're going to kick this knight so we can kick the other knight. But now you're going to play the bishop out, just to be a meanie. 
Well, you didn't do it. Um. Um, do I take this knight? Yeah, we're playing online blitz. Of course I take it. Who doesn't take a piece? So, this position is so fragile. Uh, here, let's play the rook up once. No, my knight's trapped. Oh my goodness, my knight is trapped. What do I do? <sighs> so, um,. I could play d6, but that looks miserable. Um, but I, if I don't play d6, I need to find something better. Uh, d6 kind of traps his bishop, sort of. Um, okay, let's get these pieces out. Not even going to play a6. What is going on in this game? Does the engine favor its position here? Because I actually like white's position now. I mean, yeah, black does have rook a2 coming, but... Um, like, as long as I don't hang that d6 pawn, this is kind of comfortable. Um, so, we see rook a2 now? Okay. Is it planning a sacrifice? Is that what we're saying? Um, Cause like, what else could it be planning here? Uh, rook a2 is going to happen if I play something aggressive. But I think I'm still equipped to deal with that. What? Giving away the pawn? What is that? Uh, I can take this. There's no immediate peril to me for taking this. That actually helps me. I'll take that. Um, I'll take another one. I guess these are things a 1900 could do if they were drunk. Um, it's probably the only circumstance where they'd play moves like that. But it could happen. Check. Alright. Oh, I'm in trouble. We got trouble in River City. Um. Oh boy. Well, we're losing material here. Because he takes on H7. Yeah, that's kind of a problem. And my big idea here was that I was going to push d7 and promote and just win on the spot. But there's one little problem with that. And that's that d7 doesn't win. Um, it might win if the bot blunders again, but now we're banking on a lot here. Um... So the engine's going to try to play at a 1900 level, which means it'll try to blunder. So I have to encourage it to make a blunder that actually matters. Um, which is going to be challenging. Um, yeah, so it's not going to let me just push that. So it's going to try to avoid playing the best move. So if I give this position, or give this AI positions where the best move is the only good move, um, then maybe it'll mess up somehow. Alright, so looks like we got the rook. Now I have to collect some more material to try to salvage this. Like, winning the rook isn't enough there. I have to, like, 
stop this pawn now. Um, so this isn't looking good. Also, the time situation's not the best. Um, yeah, so how do we salvage this? My knight's getting trapped. Um, okay, I have to sacrifice this pawn. Uh, it still goes after my knight. All right, maybe it'll stalemate me. Doubtful. Very doubtful. All right. Checkmate. All right, you earned it. You earned it, bot. Well, good thing I'm not going to be the one playing Leela. Um, just put it that way. Let's play one more. Bit of a faster game now. Uh, one, two. All right, here we go. And then after this, we'll move on over and watch the Leela chess battle. Um, here, take my pawn. I dare you. I double dare you. All right, you actually took it. Um, I don't have a follow-up. But it just fun, felt fun to do that. Uh, yeah, whatever. This looks fun. Okay, what's that? What is this? Did I just beat the bot by playing nonsense moves? I might have just beaten the bot by playing nonsense moves, but I had to find knight e4. It's like the one good move I had to find this game. Um, and knight g5. I guess was not entirely obvious either. Yeah, I'm up a bishop. So, um, our faith in humanity has been restored for a little bit. At least until I mess it up again. Check. So I get another pawn. Oops, I give away a knight. It doesn't want my knight. Um, rather, it wants this complicated nonsense. Ha! You fell for my... Oh, really? You play the only move that, like, keeps the knight pinned so I can win material. That's something a 1900 would totally do. Play the only mistake on the board... I can relate. I can very much relate. All right. I can win this. Maybe. Let's see. We got still a couple minutes. Yeah, I should be able to win this. So has he gone live yet? Do streamers go live in advance of their events? It's fairly uncommon, but there is one in particular who does go live. It, he even has like a nice start screen with a quote on it, like every Sunday. Um, but most streamers, I don't know, um, don't have a loading screen and all that stuff. They just focus on the main content of their program. Which reminds me, I have my own loading screen I worked on this year, which is great. It's hilarious. Um, Alright, cool. Well, I'll pop on the Leech STV uh, while I figure out um, what's going on here. It shouldn't take too long for me to figure this out. So, we're saying it's Penguin GM1, right? So I want to be there the second that um, he goes live. Alright, I got his channel open, so I'll know once he's live. And we can all go there. 
In the meantime, we'll enjoy some um, Leech Us TV here. Oh, by the way, they added a new channel. You see, like, there's top rated bullet blitz, etc. There's a bot channel here. So if you want to see, like, the most exciting bot game that's currently in progress, um, you could go to Leech Us TV to find that, too. All right, cool. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. We're going to go have some fun watching Penguin GM1. So see you next time.